Welcome to this video tutorial. In this video, I will talk about developing your first virtual reality Android app using Unity. We will be using the Google SDK so you can target Google Daydream and Google Cardboard. The hardest part of all of this is setting up your Android development environment. Luckily, there is some Unity documentation that goes through it step by step. The link is right here, and we just follow this one step after another. Number one, install the Java development kit. JDK, you need a 64-bit version, you follow the link, you install it. Second, we have to download and install the Android SDK. Now you can either use command line tools, or what's easier is you can simply install Android Studio. Android Studio can be found right here. You download it, you install it. Once you install it, instead of starting it, you go to Configure, SDK Manager, and here we have two different tabs that are important for us. The first one is SDK platforms. Here, you simply select the Android versions that are relevant to you. This could be because you want to deploy to those versions of Android later so that your application works for all the way down to Android 5.0 or higher. Or if you simply want to test an application right now with your own phone, then you need to find out which Android version is running on your phone. In my case, I have a Samsung Galaxy S8 running Android 8.0, so I simply have to make sure that Android 8.0 is installed. Next, we go to SDK tools, and here we need the Android SDK build tools, platform tools, and the SDK tools. Also, we need a USB driver. In this case, I'm using the Google USB driver, and that works with a lot of different phones. Now, for some of you, that might not work, and you will need specific USB drivers for your phone, but in that case, you just need to find out uh, via Google search, just find out which USB driver is needed and download it from a different website. Okay, once all of that is installed, you can close the SDK Manager in Android Studio. Next, we need to set up our phone. First thing we need to do is enable USB debugging. In order to do that, you actually need to enable developer options on your phone. All of this is described here on the Unity website. The rest of the configuration is in Unity. Uh, there's also the Android NDK mentioned, but we won't need that for now because we're not targeting IL2 CPP. All right, so the last step for all of this is to install Unity. Now I have Unity 2018.1.4 installed, but pretty much any version of 2017 or 2018 Unity will work. Once it is installed, we simply create a new project. select whatever Unity version we would like to use. And then we create the project. While this is setting up, we can already head over to the uh, Google website, which has some information on using Google VR SDK for Android for Unity. There's some tutorial here with some details. But the one thing that's important for us right now is to download. Click here on download, which will take us over to GitHub and there we have a Unity package. It's called Google VR for Unity 1.150. And we download it. Next, we will check on Unity. And there we have to make sure that Unity knows where all the things that we installed are located at. We click on Edit, References, and External Tools. And here we have three different locations, one for the SDK, so that's the Android SDK, one for the JDK, and then I already mentioned the NDK is not necessarily needed. So this last field here could be free, could be empty, but the other two you have to browse and find where the install location was of, of the uh, Android SDK and JDK. Once this is done, Unity you know, should be all ready to deploy to Android. One last thing. You have to now connect your phone to your PC. So you will simply use a USB cable, connect your phone, and then enable USB debugging, and set your phone to tr uh, transfer files. And once you do that, your phone will actually show up in your file explorer. You can find out whether Unity recognizes your phone uh, once we switch over to Android development. And that's what we'll do next. 
So before we import anything into our project, we simply change our platform from PC, Mac, and Linux, which is the default, over to Android. And we click switch platform. We do this prior to importing anything so that we don't have to re-import everything. Okay, so that was quick. And now we can see whether our phone is recognized. And you can see here, run device, my Samsung Galaxy is recognized. Excellent. All right, next step. We now downloaded the uh, Google VR SDK and we can simply run our Unity package that was downloaded. It will open up in Unity and we can simply import it. Okay, just going to switch to default layout. And now we head to the Google VR folder, demos, scenes, and we will simply use the Hello VR scene as a start so you can see all the functionality. All right, there's a couple more things we need to do. First, we go to File, Build Settings, and Player Settings. Over here, we have to make sure we select the Android tab. And under XR Settings, we enable Virtual Reality Supported. Now here under this SDK list, we add whatever platform we would like to use or whatever device we would like to use. In this case, I will just add Daydream. Now we also need to do a few other things. One is we have to find under other settings the package name and here we simply in this middle part so there's com dot then company name dot and then we need to find a product name. In this case I'm just making some application name up here. It's not really important for us right now since we, we will not actually publish this to the Play Store or anything. And then on the minimum API level, you need to decide which is the minimum level that you want to publish to. So in this case, my phone is using Android 8.0, but I will just select as a minimum Android 7.0. And that should be all we need to do for now. We can leave the other settings as they are. You have two ways to interact with your Unity scene now. There is GVR Editor Emulator and GVR Instant Preview Main. We usually are just using one or the other. Let's disable GVR Insta Preview and press play. Now we can actually hold down our Alt key and move our mouse around. You can see we can control the viewport. It's a pretty easy way to use mouse and keyboard to just test our application. Now let's disable that and let's turn on GVR Insta Preview and press play. Now what happens is I can now use my phone, which if you remember is connected to our computer, and I can just move it around to preview what it looks like if I'm using my phone. I can also see on my phone that I have the uh, view of the editor of the, the viewport. And that is because Instant Preview is a small application which will be installed on your phone the moment you run the editor for the first time. And we have this option here, to, we can deselect this as well. We can change the resolution and a few other things. And it is basically a streaming back and forth of data between the editor and our phone. And that's really handy to iterate quickly over at mm -hmm. testing the application and making changes. Now, unfortunately, it's also a very finicky feature. Uh, it's had its bugs and, and issues over the, uh, over the last couple months. But right now I actually have to restart my whole computer every time I start a new Unity project and I want to run in some preview for the first time. I'll simply restart a computer and it works just fine. I don't know why, but it, that's what happens. I'm sure this will change again as new versions are released. One other issue I've, I'm running into right now is that the uh, virtual reality SDK is actually not even recognized or not supported. Now that uh, sounds bad, but it's actually not a big issue. So if I go to player settings again, you can see I have Daydream enabled here. And uh, this is not even recognized right now. Now, everything still works as normal, so I can still deploy this to my phone. It will still be recognized as a day daydream application. So it's really just here in the editor that we have this, this message. I don't know exactly what it does, and I don't know why it's here, but we can just ignore it. 
Now, there's one thing I actually want to show you, and this is sort of all the other bits and pieces here in our scene, and especially the interface uh, interacting with UI elements and so on. And for that, we need the reticle to show up. And we can do this by simply moving over to Cardboard. Now, Cardboard is expected to not have any hand controllers. So we're simply using a reticle in the middle of the screen. And we're looking around to select different objects and to interact with them. So that is, uh, Cardboard is a better way to actually test this out. And uh, this is not available for Daydream because Daydream is expected to have hand controllers. All right. So if I start now, you'll be able to see this reticle here in the middle. And you can see that it actually uh, changes if we hover over this object here in the middle. And I just want to show you exactly sort of how that works or how you can set up other objects to also be interactive. So here we can see in this cube room, uh, we have some treasure and there's a number of scripts on top of here and you can have a look at the object controller. But the important part is really just that we need to use our event system that is up here. So all of this is already set up. And what we can do is we can create a 3D object. Let's say we want to create a cube. We move the cube up here out of the way. We change its color so that it's easier to see the, the reticle in front of it. And in order to make this interactive, all I have to do is add an event trigger. Now, I don't have to set up the event type yet, but usually what you would do is you would then set up a pointer enter, pointer exit, pointer uh, pointer click and uh, then add different unity actions to it so you know trigger certain things but i just want to show you uh, that you actually need the event trigger for the reticle to to recognize the object that's one thing and then the other thing we want to interact with is ui elements so let's just actually uh, look at canvas here and this canvas is actually going to disappear because it's only showing uh, us error messages or things that need to be set up so let's just do it. Uh, use a different canvas. Let's move the canvas out of the way. Let's add a button to it. Let's make the button a little bit bigger. And change color when we highlight it. And in order for this canvas and uh, this button to be recognized by the uh, event system here, we need to add a script to it. And the script is called GBR Pointer Graphic Raycaster. So whenever we add the script to a canvas, this canvas then becomes interactable with our event system. All right, let's try this again. And we use the instant preview again. So you can see the, the object here highlights as normal, but also our button highlights. And the same goes for our cube up here. So this is the way you can actually then start interacting with different objects in your environment. And now all you have to do is, once you have all the scene with the interaction set up the way you want, all you have to do is build your application. Now again, make sure that you select the SDK here that you want to use. So for example, if I select Cardboard uh, Daydream here, then when I actually deploy to my phone, it will prompt a setup of the Daydream app on my phone. All right, so you can basically leave all of these things here as they are, and you can just either click Build or Build and Run to immediately run the application on your phone once it's built. You can also enable development build if you're still iterating. And one thing that's that you can keep in mind is also if you're only changing scripts and different like script components around and uh, to, to make changes and to, to deploy it to your phone over and over again, you can also enable scripts only build, which makes it much easier to compile and to get those changes over to your phone. However, I'm just going to click build here now. And this will create an APK file. And now we can just have our phone detected and all the content pushed to our phone. And that is the end of the tutorial. If you have any questions about this process, please let me know in the comments below. And thanks for watching. See you next time.